This is just a quick video to uh, show some of the processing steps behind my new uh, rosette on fire image. Um, what happened was I had some color data from last year, some sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen data. And I, I used that as the color channels uh, for some brand new data that I got. I had one clear night, the moon was out, so I decided to shoot just uh, six hours straight of H-alpha data of the Rosette Nebula. So let me show the uh, history of that data first. Uh, I'm going to use this as the luminance data. So I'm going to use the handy History Explorer in PixInsight, and I'm going to make it uh, floating here so I can pull it off to the side. Um, this is a great tool because it allows you to step through uh, everything and then be able to see the exact settings that you used if you expand it out. So um, first I did some dynamic background extraction to even out uh, the background. And then my final histogram transformation. So now it is non-linear data. And then to uh, bring out the detail, I did local histogram equalization. And you can really see how the details pop out. Um, I might have overdone it in this step, but it ends up making for a pretty compelling image. So I stuck with it. Did a couple of uh, histogram transformation stretches to get the darkness of the background and then to bring out the uh, dust in the dimmer parts of the image here. And then I needed to do a couple of dynamic crops to get it to work with the uh, color data that I had. So this ends up being the framing for the final image. Um, it's too bad I kind of lost a lot of the field that I took. but. Uh, it ends up being a pretty nice image as is. So I'm going to use this as the luminous channel, the L data, for the final um, LHSO image. So I'll tuck that away and then concentrate now on the, the real final image, on the SHO image. So here's the final product. Here's what we're going for. I'm going to zoom back here. So here's the final image that we're going for. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning here. Looks dark because it's linear at this point. So I'll auto stretch it. And if I unlink the color channels, it should look something like this. Um, some nice color data, but uh, it's going to need some fixing up. So what did I do? Well, I ran a uh, background neutralization and then a color calibration. So I'll auto stretch it again. And then uh, change the image identifier to SHO. That's the red, green, blue is sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then um, I'll do the permanent stretch, screen stretch. Now I can tuck this away. So um, from this kind of dim color data, I do my uh, LRGB combination with that L file that I just built. And the results are dramatic. It really brought up the contrast and the detail level. Um, but I'm going to want to play with the colors here. Uh, one of the choices that I made early on is to um, chop out the green channel. And uh, I may go back and, and fix that, but I used SCNR to just do a uh, green removal with the full amount default settings. And the changes to the image are pretty significant from this to this. So now my goal um, was instead of this yellowish orange, I wanted to, to convert that over to red. Uh, but before I did that, I wanted to cut out the pink in the stars. Uh, these stars look okay, but some of these stars are a bit too magenta and pink for my taste. So what I did was I used a color saturation with a significant cutout down in the uh, purple-pink range. And I did a couple of those, so you can see the stars really turned out much whiter, um, which is, I, I think, a cleaner look for this image. So I did a series of three of those. And then I did some more uh, histogram transformation to bring out the dust. Wow, we went from this to this. I think that looks, uh, you can really see the, the halo dust coming out. And I did a, a curves transformation uh, to get a bit of contrast. Um, and then local histogram equalization, uh, my current favorite tool for bringing out dusty detail in nebulae, 
Um, you can see a significant change from here to here. Um, this really uh, feeds my tendency to overdo the processing, but uh, I, I was going for kind of a hardcore image in this case, so I'll stick with it. Uh, then I did a series of curves transformations, all with different masks. And so I made masks with uh, the luminance channel, I made masks with a range selection tool, and uh, let's just see how it turned out. From here to here, you can see I'm really starting to change the color here. I did a bit of a noise reduction with ACDNR. Let me uh, move over to a noisy region from here to here. So just a bit of noise reduction. And then I'll zoom back out here. Um, a few more curves transformations. You'll see that I ended up doing these complex curves in the A and B channels, as well as saturation, hue. Um, this is really giving me what I wanted for the final color. So from here to here, a bit more. So you can see I'm really getting at the red-yellow. Um, another local histogram equalization to bring out the, the center again. A few more curves. Um, that was for the kind of central part to make it a bit more blue. And uh, again, I'm probably going overboard here, but I was in a mood and I just wanted to go as strong as I could. And then a uh, couple final histogram transformations and uh, finishing with a morphological transformation to, to dim the stars down. So basically I went from um, this kind of color here to this with some finely selected um, masks using range selection and all kinds of luminance uh, masks, slight adjustments to get at the different bands and um, I ended up with this image, which, uh, again, might be a bit much, but uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you enjoyed watching.